Good morning and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. As, as India celebrates its 70th Independence Day today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort a short while ago. Much more on that and much more in the next half an hour in this news bulletin. Let us begin with the headlines. 70th Independence Day celebrations across the country. Prime Minister addresses the nation from ramparts of Red Fort calls for concerted efforts to achieve Sarajya. Prime Minister raises the issue of terrorism in his address. Thanks people of uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir for wishes. Says India won't yield to terrorism or violence. President warns against rise of divisive and intolerant forces in Independence Day Eve address, calls for firm action against attack on Dalits minorities. Nigerian Islamist group Aboko Haram releases a video showing abducted schoolgirls from Chibok. Nigerian government says it is in touch with the militants behind the video. And Deepa Karmakar narrowly misses out an Olympic medal, finishes the fourth in women's vault event. Well, the nation is celebrating its 70th Independence Day today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the nation to mark the event at the historic Red Fort. He unfurled the tricolour and inspected the Tri Services Guard of Fauna. In his address to the nation, the Prime Minister spoke at length about the achievements of his government and said that the government is not surrounded by criticism but expectations. The Prime Minister spoke at length about the dream of Surajya. Let love, caring, and compassion unite us. के संकल्प को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए अपनी अपनी विशेष जिम्मेवारियों की ओर प्रतिबद्धता से आगे बढ़ना होगा. And the Prime Minister also touched upon the issue of terrorism and said that India rejects terror and violence. Now, touching upon uh, the protests in uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the Prime Minister said that India and Pakistan present to the world two varied uh, reactions to terror. Modi questioned what a kind of culture it is that celebrates terror. Hinsa aur atyachar ko hamare desh mein koi sthan nahi hai. Agar Bharat ke majboot भारत के लोकतंत्र को मजबूत बनाना है भारत को सपनों को पूरा करना है तो हमारे लिए हिंसा का मार्ग कभी काम नहीं होगा आज कहीं जंगलों में माओवाद के नाम पर सीमा पर उग्रवाद के नाम पर पहाड़ों में आतंकवाद के नाम पर कंधे पर बंदूक लेकर के निर्दोषों को मारने का खेल चला जा रहा है चालीस चालीस होल गया ये धरती माता रक्त से रंजीत होती गई है लेकिन इस आतंकवाद को रास्ते पर जाने वालों ने कुछ नहीं पाया मैं उन नौजवानों को कहना चाहता हूं ये देश हिंसा को कभी सहन नहीं करेगा ये देश आतंकवाद को कभी नहीं सहन करेगा ये देश आतंकवाद के सामने कभी झुकेगा नहीं माओवाद के सामने कभी झुका कुछ दिनों से बलूचिस्तान के लोगों ने गिलगिट के लोगों ने पाक ऑक्यूपाइड कश्मीर के लोगों ने वहां के नागरिकों ने जिस प्रकार से मुझे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद दिया है जिस प्रकार से मेरा आभार व्यक्त किया है मेरे प्रति उन्होंने जो सद्भावना जताई है दूर दूर बैठे हुए लोग जिस धरती को मैंने देखा नहीं है जिन लोगों को विषय में मेरी कभी मुलाकात नहीं हुई है लेकिन ऐसे दूर सुदूर बैठे हुए लोग हिंदुस्तान के एक प्रधानमंत्री को अभिनंदन करते हैं उसका आदर करते हैं तो मेरे सवा करोड़ देशवासियों का आनंद 
Well, the Prime Minister also spoke about farmers and the work being done to ensure that they also reap the benefits of their hard work and sacrifices. He also said that despite a drought and floods, farmers have ensured that there is no dearth of food in the country. We have MSP bonus उसको परचेज करने की व्यवस्था का सुपरबंधन किया है और इसलिए अब किसान को दाल के लिए भी हम प्रोत्साहित कर रहे हैं और उसका लाभ भी बहुत बड़ा हो किसान को ये समझाया कि तुम्हारी जमीन में ये कमी है ये अच्छाइयां हैं तुम्हारी जमीन इस फसल के लिए योग्य है इस फसल के लिए योग्य नहीं है और किसानों ने धीरे-धीरे सोइल हेल्थ कार्ड के जरिए अपना प्लान करना शुरू किया और जिन जिन लोगों ने प्लान किया है वो मुझे बताते हैं कि साहब हमारा खर्चा करीब करीब 25 परसेंट कम हो रहा है। Well, the Prime Minister also used the opportunity to thank all political parties for the passage of the GST bill, saying that it will strengthen the economy. The Prime Minister also said that the government is committed to keeping inflation in check. मैं मेरे किसान भाइयों को दो साल के अकाल के बावजूद भी देश के अर्थ के अन्न के भंडार भरने के लिए उन्होंने जो निरंतर प्रयास किया उसके लिए मैं उनका अभिनंदन करता हूं सूखे की स्थिति बदली इस बार वर्षा अच्छी हो रही है कहीं कहीं पर अधिक वर्षा के कारण तकलीफ भी हुई है जिन राज्यों को जिन नागरिकों को तकलीफ हुई है भारत सरकार पूरी तरह उनके संकट के समय उनके साथ है पहले से भारत 19 रैंक ऊपर चला आया है और भारत बहुत तेजी से ऊपर आगे बढ़ रहा है भाइयों बहनों हमारे देश में जिस प्रकार से हम एक वैश्विक संदर्भ में भी एक गतिशील और प्रिडिक्टेबल अर्थव्यवस्था को लेकर के आगे बढ़ रहे हैं अभी अभी जो जीएसटी का कानून पास हुआ वो भी उसमें एक ताकत देने वाला काम हुआ है और वो सभी दल उसके लिए अभिनंदन के अधिकारी हैं जिस प्रकार से पहले महंगाई बढ़ती थी अगर उसी रफ्तार से बड़ी होती तो पता नहीं मेरे देश के गरीब का क्या होता इसको रोकने में हमने भरपूर कोशिश की है लेकिन फिर भी ये सरकार अपेक्षाओं से गिरी सरकार है आपकी मेरे देशवासियों अपेक्षाएं स्वाभाविक है लेकिन मैं उस दिशा में प्रयत्न करने में कोई कोताही नहीं बरतने दूंगा जितना प्रयास मुझसे होगा मैं करता रहूंगा और गरीब की थाली को महंगी नहीं होने दूंगा जहां टांग न अड़ानी चाहिए वहां अड़ा देता है और जहां अड़ानी चाहिए वहां अड़ा नहीं देता भाग जाता है ये स्थिति ये कारण संस्कृति बदलने का हमने प्रयास किया है और इसलिए साढ़े तीन सौ रुपये में बिकने वाला बल्ब सरकारी इंटरवेंशन का परिणाम ये हुआ कि आज हम पचास रुपये में वो बल्ब बांट रहे कहां साढ़े तीन सौ और कहां पचास पूरा विश्व सोलार एनर्जी की ओर बल दे रहा है हमने 118 पर से एक परसेंट एक परसेंट बढ़ोतरी की है ये बहुत बड़ा ये इंक्रीमेंटल चेंज नहीं है ये बहुत बड़ा हाई जंप है हम चीजों को उसके कंटेंट की दृष्टि से हम आगे बढ़ाना चाहते हैं An earlier, President Pranam Mukherjee delivered his address to the nation on Sunday, the eve of India's 70th Independence Day. In his speech, uh, the President warned against the rise of divisive and intolerant forces in the country. He also called for firm action against the growing attacks on Dalits and minorities. Fellow citizens, in his fifth Independence Day Eve address, President Pranam Mukherjee spoke about several pressing issues of the country. The first on the list being rising incidents of violence against the weaker sections of society. He said such attacks must be dealt with firmly. He also added that we cannot call ourselves a civilized society if we fail to protect our women and children. In these four years, I also saw with some disquiet forces of divisiveness and intolerance trying to raise their ugly head 
attacks on weaker sections that militate against our national ethos are aberrations that need to be dealt with firmly. The collective wisdom of our society and our polity gives me the confidence that such forces will remain marginalized and India's remarkable growth story will continue uninterrupted. The safety and security that we provide to our women and children determines the well-being of the state and society. Every incident of violence against a woman or a child inflicts a wound on the soul of civilization. We cannot call ourselves a civilized society if we fail in this duty. In his message to political Hello, leaders, citizens. the president cautioned Democracy against unmindful pursuit of divisive political exercise. agenda, highlighting in the need for duty. tolerance in a diverse nation Hello, like citizens. ours. Democracy is more than periodic exercise of choices to elect the government. The great tree of liberty requires constant nourishment through the institutions of democracy. Disruptions, obstructionism, and unmindful pursuit of a divisive political agenda by groups and individuals lead to nothing but institutional travesty and constitutional subversion. Polarizing debates only deepen fault lines in public discourse. President Mukherjee also laid Citizen stress on inclusive growth. He said, as we celebrate government. 70 years of and our freedom, it is time to move beyond laurels of the past and work towards Hello, a citizens. prosperous future. India will grow only when all of India grows. The excluded ones have to be included in the development process. The heart and the alienated have to be brought back into the mainstream. In this age of technological advance, machines are being pitted against men. The only way to survive this is to acquire knowledge and skills and learn to innovate inclusive innovations linked to the aspirations of our people can benefit a wide spectrum of society as well as preserve our diversity. We as a nation must nurture creativity, science and technology. Here, our schools and institutions of higher learning have a special responsibility. In the end, the president called out for peace and harmony while extending special gratitude to the security forces who guard the country. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. To look to the future. And Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari has also greeted the nation on Independence Day today, paying a rich tribute to the valiant freedom fighters whose courage and sacrifice led to the freedom of the country. The Vice President called for resolve to work hard towards achieving the goal of prosperity, social equality and dignity for every citizen of the country. Meanwhile, India's highest uh, peacetime gallantry award, uh, the Ashok Chakra, has been posthumously awarded to Havildar Hangpan Dada of uh, the 35 Rashtriya Rifles of the Assam Regiment for fighting bravely and killing uh, four intruders before laying down his life at a height of 13,000 feet in the harsh and icy Himalayan range of uh, North Kashmir in May this year. The 36-year-old Dada valiantly fought uh, at the treacherous uh, Sham Sabari range in North Kashmir, eliminating four heavily armed terrorists who had infiltrated into North Kashmir from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Lieutenant Colonel Niranjan of the National Security Guard's Bomb Disposal Unit and Corporal Guru Sevak Singh from the Indian Air Force Commando, who bravely laid down their lives during the terrorist strike on the Pathan Court Air Base in January, are also among the 14 Shaurya Chakra awardees in the Independence Day Gallantry Awards list. Meanwhile, Lance Naik Hanuman Thapa, who survived for five long days after being buried under 35 feet of snow in a Siachen Glacier in February, but later succumbing to his injuries in hospital, was awarded a Sena Medal for gallantry. And militants attacked security forces at Nohata in downtown Srinagar, injuring five personnel and triggering a gunfight. 
The unspecified number of militants fired at the security forces in the area, which is close to the historic Jama Masjid. Now, five security personnel were injured in the militant attack. The exchange of fire was going on. The attack came as the country is celebrating its 70th Independence Day today. Well, we'll slip into a very short break here. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Freedom is responsibility. How far have you really gone ahead? India has also many times demonstrated its maturity uh, compared to any other even Western country. So the battle continues, but thank God it has been brought within the framework of the democratic institutions. I think the solution for a healthy, vibrant democracy is that young people like you should come forward and take part in politics. Watch 70 Years of Freedom only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Now, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has called for reforms at municipal and panchayat levels to complement the efforts of the centre and states to improve the ease of doing business. Now, addressing a seminar in Durg, he said that if investors wish to invest, they had to go through environment clearance, state government clearance and other clearances. But if they do not get permission from local bodies like municipality or panchayat, the entire procedure becomes worthless. He also said that uh, India missed to take advantage of the earlier global economic revolutions but now is emerging as the fastest growing economy despite uh, recessionary trends in the world. Jaitley also said uh, that reforms in taxation are inevitable for development and introduction of the goods and services tax is a major step towards this direction. <laughs> उस ट्रेंड को डिफाई करना और उस लहर के खिलाफ खड़े हो जाना और फिर प्रगति करना क्या इसमें से उभर कर भारत की ताकत आ सकती है well, let's switch gears and talk about the flood situation in Bihar. Well, the Falgu River on Sunday covered a vast area in Nalanda district, which affected at least 10,000 people across nine panchayats of the state. The situation has improved in 14 other flood-hit districts of the state, but the water level in Ganga, Soni, Punpun, Ghagra are flowing above the danger mark at different places like uh, Dighat, Gandhi Ghat, Ati Ghat in Patna and uh, Kehelgaon in Bhagalpur district. Earlier, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar conducted an aerial survey of uh, Patna, Nalanda, Jehanabad and Gaya districts on 13th of August after the heavy downpour and also held a review meeting with the officials at Gaya. Commissioner <laughs> नवादा के और रोहतास के डीएम के साथ हम लोगों ने विस्तृत चर्चा की है और सब चीजों की रिपोर्ट भी ली और स्वयं भी देखा तो चिंता करने की कोई बात नहीं है और लोग निश्चिंत रहें News from Maharashtra now and the wreckage of the washed away SUV has been recovered on the 11th day of the search operation in the Mahad the bridge collapse tragedy. Now, two bodies trapped inside have also been recovered, taking the death toll to 28. 12 people, however, are still missing. Now, the sports utility vehicle was found around 300 meters away from the accident site in Mahad on the Mumbai-Goa highway in Raigarh district. 
The search is being jointly conducted uh, by the National Disaster Response Force, Navy and locals and it will be intensified in the coming days. Now, naval divers also located the wreckage of the second state transport bus uh, which was also washed away in the turbulent Savitri River near Mahad after the British era bridge collapsed. Now, two buses of the Maharashtra State uh, Road uh, Transport Corporation and a few private vehicles were washed away after the bridge crashed amid heavy rains. The decades-old structure on Savitri River was to be dismantled in December this year as part of the Mumbai-Goa Highway expansion project. Let's get to some international news. Well, the Nigerian Islamist group Boko Haram has released a video showing some of the school girls that they abducted from the northern town of Chibok. The 50 girls are shown with a gunman who demands the release of fighters in return for the girls adding that uh, some abducted girls were killed in airstrikes. The D Nigerian government is now saying that it is in touch with the militants who are behind the video. And the group is said to be holding more than 200 of the 276 uh, final year girls that it had seized from a school in April 2014. Non-Muslims uh, were forcibly converted to Islam and it is feared that many of the school's girls have been sexually abused and forced into marriage by their captors. The video provides the first visual proof for that scores of the girls are still alive since an earlier production dating from May 2014, a month after the mass abduction. Another video which emerged in April this year showed only 15 of the girls. Okay. I'm Let's get you some more international stories in World Rap. Kurdish forces in Iraq say that they have captured several villages near Mosul from the Islamic State group. The city is Islamic State's last major stronghold in the country. The offensive began at dawn on Sunday, backed by airstrikes from the US led coalition. Mosul, Iraq's second largest city, has been under IS control since June 2014. The U.S. state of uh, Wisconsin activated its uh, National Guard on Sunday to help maintain law and order. This after a fatal shooting by police uh, sparked a night of angry protests and arson in the city of Milkawi. Now, violence broke out in the city after an African-American was shot dead in a police clash on Saturday. Police say that Sylvie Smith did not drop a gun he was holding when he was told to do so. Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif is poised to pick a successor to Army Chief General Raheel Sharif. Reports say that four candidates have been shortlisted. Now, key considerations will include the candidates' view on foreign policy issues, especially ties with India. Succession would take place upon the retirement of General Sharif at the end of November. Now on to some news from the Rio Olympic Games. Well, day 9 turned out to be a disappointing one for India as gymnast Deepa Karmakar narrowly missed out the bronze by finishing 4th in the women's vault event. Shuttler Saina Nehwal, the men's hockey team and tennis pair of Saina Mirza and Rohan Babana also crashed out on a dismal day at the Olympic Games. Now, India's uh, A shuttler Saina Nehwal crashed out of the Rio Games. Uh, lost, she lost to world number 61, Maria Olitina of Ukraine in her second Group G match. Meanwhile, as far as uh, badminton is concerned, uh, Saina Nehwal crashed out of the Rio Games. Uh, she lost to world number 61, Maria Olitina of Ukraine in her group uh, G match. However, PV Sindhu and K. Srikant kept India's hopes afloat by advancing to the pre-quarter finals. Sindhu managed to eke out a 19-21, 21-15, 21-17 win over Lee Michel. In men's singles, uh, Srikanth defeated uh, Sweden's uh, Henry Hookskanen 21-6, 21-18 in the second match of Group H to enter the knockout stage. Meanwhile, India's so tennis campaign says, ended in, in dejection as the Sanya Mirza and Rohan Bobana were blown away by the Czech team of Radek Stapnik and Lucy Radakeva in the bronze medal playoff. 
The pair suffered a 1667 humiliation in the mixed doubles contest. And in yet another setback, Indian men's hockey team failed to make it to the semi final of the Rio Games as they went down 1 3 to Belgium in the quarter final. Akashdeep Singh gave India the early lead, but uh, Sebastian Dokia scored twice to put Belgium 2 1 in the front. Now, Tom Boone scored uh, in the fourth quarter to assure Belgium's passage to the semi final. And gymnast Deepa Karmakar missed out uh, on the bronze medal by a whisker to finish fourth in the women's uh, vault final. Deepa, who had become the first Indian women gymnast to have qualified for the Olympics, scored an average of 15.066 points, a mere 0 0.15 less than the eventual bronze winner. And in shooting, uh, both Gagan Narang and Chen Singh bowed out of the men's 50 meters rifle three positions event. Gaganarung finished with 1,162 with 33rd rank, while Chen Singh finished with 25th position. And boxer Manoj Kumar lost 0-3 to Uzbek rival Fazliddin Gab Nazanov in the light to welter 64kg category pre-quarterfinal bout. Manoj put up a spirited show, but he could not match the power of 5th seed Fazliddin and bowed out. And India had a disappointing day in the women's uh, marathon on Sunday as well as OP Jesha finished on the 89th position while her compatriot uh, Kavita Raut finished 120th at the Olympic Games. Now Jesha clocked a timing of 2 hours 47 minutes and 19 seconds while Kavita clocked 2 hours 59 minutes 29 seconds. Well, India's campaign in golf also ended on a disappointing note as SSP Chorasia finished uh, tied 50th and Anirban Lahiri finished uh, tied 57th after going through contrasting days at the Olympic golf course. Well, let's take a look at some more events that made headlines at the Rio Games. Well, Jamaica's Usain Bolt became the first athlete to win a three Olympic 100 meters title by beating American Justin Gatlin to win the gold medal. Bolt ran 9.81 seconds in his final Olympics uh, to replicate his success at the Beijing 2008 and London 2012. Now Gatlin finished 0.08 seconds behind Bolt to take the silver, while Canada's Andre de Grasse took bronze. And Britain's Andy Murray became the first tennis player to win two Olympic singles titles by beating Argentina's Juan Martin Del Potro in Rio. Murray secured a thrilling 7-5-4-6-6-2-7-5 victory to make it Britain's most successful day with five gold medals. Meanwhile, uh, Vende Nieck of South Africa won the men's uh, 400 meters gold in a world record time of 43.03 seconds. His time bettered the previous world mark of 43.18 seconds set by Michael Johnson in Sive in 1999. Now, Kieran James of uh, Grenada took the silver, while Lashon Merritt of the US claimed the bronze. Minas, meanwhile, China's uh, Shi Ting Mao won the gold in the women's uh, three meters uh, springboard event with teammate uh, He Zi taking the silver and uh, Italy's uh, Tanya Cagnotto taking the bronze. Now, Ting Mao tied with He in the first two dives before pushing ahead in the third to achieve 84 points and eventually he scored a total of 406.05 points. Let's take a look at the overall medal tally now. The United States continues its dominance uh, and that continued on the day at 9th as well. And they have won uh, 69 medals so far. That includes uh, 26 gold, 21 silver and 22 bronze. Now Britain has jumped to the second spot with 38 medals while China has slipped to the third spot with 45 medals. That includes 15 gold, 13 silver and 17 bronze. That is all in this edition of news. But news and updates continue on Rajasabha TV. Thanks for watching.